Welcome to the one year review of my Yeti SB100 Dream Build. My name is Jonathan Lee. I'm a Yeti Cycles Ambassador and I'm usually a cross country racer and that's why this bike is my absolute favorite. It's my dream build. I've refined this over the last two years on getting this build exactly how I want it, uh, tweaking all the little parts and all the little setup and everything else. Uh, so we'll go into the parts and the setup and everything about this bike here in this video and you can check down below for more information on this. Uh, so first of all, Yeti SB 100, fantastic bike for XC racing. As you can see, I do it for light or I use this bike for light duty trail riding or even heavy duty stuff. I've even taken it to North star, but there's national championships, Carson city off road, Tahoe trail, 100, uh, pro XCT down in SoCal, even a gravel race, the Sagan dirt Fondo and more XC racing. So, uh, this bike is super versatile. This is the Turk frame, uh, Turk spec, which basically means a higher modulus carbon. So lighter weight, but still the designed ride characteristic that they were going for. And this bike performs extremely well for XC racing, extremely well for trail riding. And I actually think it's the bike that most people should have. Uh, they will have more fun on the majority of the trails they ride rather. And I think it's just a better choice. So uh, love this bike. So I went for a size medium and I am five foot 11 with a 32 inch inseam. I could have gone for the large, but with a slightly longer reach on this bike, which I guess is kind of par for the course for modern cross country bikes these days. Um, I do actually like running a slightly smaller chassis and XC and then just running a slightly longer stem. But really the core of this bike all comes down to the switch infinity linkage, which is different than the normal linkage in the sense that this is oriented 90 degrees from standard. So instead of front to back, it's side to side. And what that allows them to do is tune the characteristics for pedaling separately from, uh, because it's a floating link down there, separately from the characteristics of how it moves through the travel when you're descending or going through bumps or anything like that. And it's incredible and it functions so well. And I never hit that lockout switch on this shock. I wish that shock was black. A fox, come on, no more Kashima. But I never ever use the lockout switch because the thing just pedals so incredibly well, soaks up all the small chatter, but stays extremely stable and composed under underfoot when you're pedaling and then is really progressive and ramps up all the way through so you can really hit big stuff. This is the uh, Prologo Dimension Knack saddle. Uh, it's a 143 width. I love this saddle. It's a snub nose saddle. It's fantastic for mountain biking and it's extremely light being full carbon chassis and full carbon rails. Um, and it's very durable. So I don't like the mountain bike version quite as much because I don't like a grippy saddle and extra padding and this thing's just great. I have the Lev CI dropper post, KS Lev CI dropper post. It's the lightest dropper post that I know of on the market. I had to run a 150, which is kind of a bummer. I wish I could run the 125, but because of seat post height uh, and minimum insertion length, I had to run a 150. Didn't need that big of a drop. Wolf tooth remote dropper, not the extra leverage one. I like this thing, uh, but it does wear holes in my gloves. So I wish it wasn't so rough on the paddle. I'll try the PNW one. That's the NV, I believe a 90 millimeter stem is their mountain bike stem. Love it. It's a perfect match when you run their stem and their bars together. I feel like it's a fantastic combo that changes the ride characteristics of every bike. That's an MTB podcast stem cap. And it says likes to party because this bike does like to party and you can get those at mtbpodcast.com. Uh, those handlebars right there, those are the NVM5 bars, basically their flat bar. Love it. I roll it slightly back uh, toward my lap a bit than standard, and I find that that gives me a little bit better, I guess, geometry, a little bit better back sweep. This bar is incredible, and I run it at 740. I'm not a, I'm not a big dude. Uh, 740 millimeters is what I run even on my enduro bikes. I believe those are the ODI F1 Vapor Grips, and they are a lot like uh, ESIs, but I like them much better. They're more comfortable. Uh, they are not more durable. They wear out very fast. They also like drift in a ride, not off, but they twist like that, which is a little weird, but I really like those grips. Uh, like them. They're my favorite grips by far. They're better in the wet than ESIs, I've found. Uh, so I have a Cane Creek Slam set on there to get an extra low front end. Uh, however, I don't run the top cap assembly because the bolt that they have always snaps under torque. Like you don't even get to the torque spec. So fix that cane Creek. That would be awesome. Uh, those are X speedo M force eight tie pedals. Some of the lightest SPD pedals you can get, maybe the lightest, uh, crank brothers obviously are lighter, but these are really light. I think like a uh, 180 grams or something like that. So, uh, no, I'm wrong. I don't know. They're really light, uh, quark power meter, uh, the D zero love it. I run a 32 tooth ring on there and it's fantastic. Uh, recommend that highly. Then I run the axis drivetrain. So 1050 in the rear with that derailleur with that really cool. When it like gets hit, it kind of snaps out of position and saves the derailleur hanger, which I like. Uh, there's the shifter and man, I think that this is a swing and a miss. 
They could have done so many other things with this thing. And I feel like the ergos are super weird. I've tried every mounting position and that's the one that works out for me, I guess the least poorly. <laughs> so, uh, but it does make for a very clean cockpit and I love how that thing shifts. I have latency problems on my Venge and I have their ETAP system, not the new axis, not on this. It's perfect. It's snappy. I've never once had a bad shift with this system and it's incredible. So love the rainbow, but it does wear off, which is super sad. Uh, so I wish it was a little more durable. Uh, SRAM level ultimate brakes, love the weights, uh, but that's about it. Uh, they're really fussy. They're kind of hard to set up. You have to run a lot of pressure in them when you ble bleed them. And they try to give it a longer lever to give you better like leverage and to get more power out of them, which it kind of helps. But these calipers, I think I get a lot of flex out of them. They're just really not that powerful. I'd like to try XTRs instead, maybe, but MRP Ribbon SL Fork. This is the 120 millimeter travel fork. That's what this bike was designed for, and I love it. And this fork is fantastic for this bike. It's like built specifically, I feel like, to match this bike. I know it wasn't, but uh, this bike is extremely supple off the top, but very supportive in terms of pedaling, and then very progressive. And this fork is the best match, much better than the Stepcast 130 or Stepcast 34 that I've tried. Um, so I love this fork. It doesn't have the ramp control to save weight. So you just fill it up with air right there. Uh, then low speed compression, uh, that I usually run it wide open and I hardly ever lock it out. I guess maybe if I was sprinting on a road at the end of a race, maybe I'd lock it out then, but this bike has, or that fork has positive and negative air springs that you fill independently and little bleeders on the lowers, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can get rid of that pressure down there. I never hear air come out, but that doesn't mean they're not working. And this fork, uh, so basically I run a hundred, uh, PSI positive or actually 98 PSI positive, And then I run 108 negative, uh, on the air springs for this one that's above their normal or their recommended spring rate, but that's what works for me. And I run the MV M525 wheels. I have slammed these things for two years now and even rode them at North star many days, hitting the gnarliest trails I could at North star a Carpiel, Dogbone, all that stuff. And they are perfectly true to this day. I'm super impressed. I love these wheels. They handle really well and they're nowhere near as harsh as their old wheels, which is really cool. I run the Aspen basically for everything that I do. It's a, I run the 2.25 with a 120 TPI. I wish that they would allow us to run the 2.4 that Nino has. That would be awesome. Or maybe even the 160 TPI that they have. But a uh, great tread pattern, really predictable. Not quite as hard of a solid, like a solid lock-in on the shoulder as the Recon Race, but more predictable than the Recon Race. There's the Specialized Z-Cage that I have. It's the carbon one. I don't run the tool on this one. Uh, it's just uh, to save weight, and I like being able to pull from the left to keep my throttle hand on because I'm used to moto. Last thing is on this shock, I run all the way up to 172 PSI, which is a higher spring rate than normal, but that's what I love. And this bike is super underrated by XC racers. They think it descends well, which it totally does. It descends better than basically all their bikes, but the thing climbs so incredibly well on smooth climbs, especially on rough climbs. I think it's an incredibly fast XC bike and a great trail bike and more people should ride it. Uh, meaning basically people buy bikes with way too much travel all the time. And I think if they bought this bike, they'd have even more fun, super playful, really capable. So, uh, if you have any more questions about this bike, let me know in the comments below, check out the specs in the description and you can check out my other dream build videos that I have up here, which are my open wide and my Yeti SB 150. If you want to see a video on my Venge, let me know. I can do one on that too. Uh, and even my Trek Speed Concept TT bike, we could do one on that too. Uh, so uh, check that out. I will be building these bikes up with a couple different changes for 2020. So stay tuned to my Instagram to check that out. It's Lee Jonathan underscore. You can follow me on Strava as well. Follow me there and head over to Trainer Road if you want to become a faster cyclist because that's what I do for work. And yeah, thanks everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and hopefully it taught you something about this bike. Maybe you're interested in it. Anyways, we'll talk to you all later.